Um, we can, yeah, we can totally start with that. Uh, can okay. you can you hear me properly in your headphones? Yep. Awesome. Um, so yeah, for people that don't know, uh, I run this podcast out of Albuquerque, which is only famous now for meth and Breaking Bad. Yeah. And they released it yesterday, right? They're like, we're gonna make statues out of Jesse Pinkman yeah. and Walter White. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's it's, it's. So what do you? I have my opinions, but. Okay, so first, if you live in Albuquerque and you hear of this, it sounds like a cool idea. Like, everybody loves Breaking Bad. It did wonders for our city, our state. It's awesome. But when you really think about it, (laughs) and if you live here, you know we have a drug problem. So for us to put up this monument, which I should disclose... The monument is being paid for by Vince Gilligan. So we're not paying for it. Right. Yeah. It's privately done by the showrunner. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think they want to put it up in downtown um, in the middle of homelessness. And, you know, we have this drug addiction problem. Like we have drugs that are rampant yeah. through our city. So, you know, if we didn't have a drug problem, sure. I think it's great. But... To say, hey, let's have this monument dedicated to the show that is centered around drugs in a place where we have a problem with drugs, I feel like it's in poor taste, quite frankly. Like, if I had a family member that died of meth, um, I'd be pretty upset about it. I mean, I don't have any relation in that way, but... Just as a community member, community member, I feel like it's in poor taste. Yeah, and well, I unfortunately I have friends that have fallen victim to that. Yeah. A couple of which I have no idea if they're alive or dead. Yeah. Um, just because that's just what that's what surrounds that life. And so, if and when this happens, what kind of message does that? Not that the the hardcore drug community is like, um, that they pay attention to like social things that are right, happening, right. but like. For people that might see that, everyone knows who Breaking Bad is. Yeah. So people who see that, what what impression does that make? What, you know, are we glorifying this now? Because the whole point, because Breaking Bad is one of the greatest shows ever made. I don't think, yeah. it's, I don't I, think I you agree. can argue that. Yeah. Like there is like Walter White's right up there with Tony Soprano when it comes like the anti-heroes of our time. But it's about a good blue collar family man who due to unfortunate circumstances gets into life of crime and then gets addicted to it. Yeah. That's the whole point is the person, the Walter White you see in season one is a far cry from season. What five is where it ended, right? Yeah. Season four, season five. Yeah. So yeah, to glorify that makes absolutely no sense. I, I don't get it. I mean, I, um, I've mentioned to you, I ran for office, so I already have like my thoughts around mental health, drug addiction, like yeah. all these issues glorifying a show that's centered around drugs i just i don't see how that's a good idea i know a lot of people like i i was looking on twitter last night about this and a lot of people are like oh yeah i'm gonna drive to albuquerque to see the statue when it's up and like you know it's a cool fun fan factor that's a band-aid solution though but it's yeah it's not i I just i don't get it (laughs) well because i've seen uh people like talk about oh i want to go to albuquerque to do like the breaking bad tour like yeah. we'll see the house which is amazing it's R- lots of fun right yeah they'll go <laughs> see like it. the old it used to be an octopus car wash but now it's, i think it's a mister right i um, and all probably yeah and so like doing that's fine but yeah i don't i don't, I don't see the benefit i really don't um and yeah, you're right we have a absolutely horrendous drug problem here um I mean, what, it, because like you said, you ran for office. You have a bit of taste of like New Mexico politics firsthand. Yeah. Do you feel like it's a priority for this for the politicians here in the state? I mean, the drug problem. Yeah. Um. So after kind of going behind the scenes, learning more about it, it's it's really tough to say. So I do think there are a lot of politicians really wanting to fix the problem, but then there's a lot of people they say they do, and then they get in office, and then they. You know, it, it's, it's back to usual. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really frustrating the amount of people that are like, we want change, we want change, and we want someone different. But then we keep, you know, electing the same people or people that are handpicked by their best friend. Uh, yeah. it, you know, I won't get into that. <laughs> um, but that's kind of unfortunately how it is. Yeah. So people might be very disconnected from the problem. They don't see it as much. Um, they're... They haven't had any experiences with it. So they're like, oh, let me 
it's not that bad of a problem. Everything's great here. Right. Yeah, well, go downtown and talk to some people in some of these homeless camps, and you'll realize that the majority of them are addicted to drugs, or they have a mental health issue, and they're just not even there. Yeah. No, it's it's, um, it's sad. It's legitimate. I mean, going down just Broadway right there, yeah. just you hit, you know, we're on fifth, so like fifth, fourth, going all the way down to university. Yeah. Right? It's just littered with tents and camps it's it's and it's very sad and i actually up until the beginning of this year i lived on the northeast heights mm-hmm. and i mean and i hate phrasing it like this because it sounds ugly but like it's spreading like even to like the nice parts of town quote unquote it like the homeless population is growing so much that it's just spreading All right and it seems like i mean obviously covid just accelerated everything like everything right. bad it just yeah got ramped up But it does, it's just interesting, you bring up a very good point, where people want change, but they vote for the same person, and again... The equivalent. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. And unfortunately, like, you could apply that same mindset with homelessness to Mm -hmm. the policing problems that we have, where, you know, I remember to specifically name him, uh, when Keller first ran for election, it was, I'm going to reform APD, we're going to do all these great things, and... The biggest change, and I have friends that are in APD. I have friends that are in the Staters and Bernalillo County. Like, the biggest change that APD got was they got a better starting pay after probation and a DOJ investigation. Right. That's all they got. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's just strange to me. And I have talked to a lot of people. They've also said, well, we've got all this training as well, which has been great. And it's interesting. You talk to some police, and they're like, yeah, this has been great. The training has been great because we do need more training. And then off others are just like, we don't need it. We don't want it. But, you know, if, if you're up to date on what's been going on in Albuquerque the last week or so, they do need training. It's obvious. We need training. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is not a political thing. This is an issue. No, it's an issue nationwide. Because yeah. I, it, admittedly, it's becoming increasingly hard. But I am pro police. I want, yeah. like, I want no, police I mean, to succeed. I'm pro su- police, hundred yeah. yeah, percent. Yeah, like, I want police to succeed. Obviously, yep. I think uh, defunding or getting rid of police officers is a very poor idea. Agreed. Uh, because I mean, like, let's say like here in Albuquerque, the two biggest private companies for security are IPS. And I like Securitas or whatever they're called, like yeah. the, the three dot symbol. Yeah. So what if they pl- replace the police? Do people want that? Of course not. No. Of course not. I mean, as it is, we have, we're having to pay for police to add extra security in different areas. So like right now we're, you know, starting this new thing in downtown Albuquerque where we're bringing in more police, but we have to pay them more as well. Right. Well, so that's also taking away from big box stores. So they're not happy about that because, it, unfortunately, you know, we don't have enough cops in our city. No. Um, I wish we did. Um, you know, that's a whole other <laughs> bag of worms. Um, but, you know, it's a can of worms. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so for people who don't know, uh, the crime got so bad about six years ago when they started doing it, where they put like APD in front of Best Buys, in front of Targets. And they're paying them, actually. So Best Buy, all these big box stores, they pay them. Oh, wow. They, they are paying them. Um, so that's the thing now. So there's this big focus on downtown Albuquerque because they've seen, a, you know, an increase in crime there. And, you know, as as things go, like if crime goes down there and they see an uptick in different areas, they're going to, you know, put them in different areas. Um, but they are getting paid more for that. Interesting. So that's not... Um, that's not... They're just going there for right. fun reasons or anything. <laughs> so how long has uh, that uh, uptick been going on, to your knowledge? Do you know? I mean, just this year, yeah. I'll say we're on track to have a new homicide rate, you know, homicide record. Oh, um, it's, I mean, frankly, it's frustrating. Like, I, I love my city. Yeah. I, you know, when I see people leave, I get very sad, you know, because I want our city to succeed. And I think in order to do that, you know, we the people need to make that happen. Yeah. And, you know, use our voices to speak up. You know, I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. Like, we all need to make our voice heard. Um because these are issues that affect us. And maybe it doesn't affect you today, but it might affect you tomorrow. Um, you know, the crime, everyone's like, well, I'm good. You know, I'm, I never go downtown. It's like, yeah, but it's creeping in different areas. Exactly. It's, it's, it's spreading. And, you know, you're not the first person to say, like, the more I talk to people that genuinely enjoy Albuquerque, or at least at a bare minimum see the potential in Albuquerque, they all say the same thing. Yep. We're watching people leave. 
we're watching ta- like I talk I've been able to talk to a lot of people here in like the entertainment like comedy industry or like scene here mm-hmm. and they're like yeah we have great talent but there are so many people flying out leaving they're all going to Austin to Denver to Phoenix Florida. Tucson Florida oh yeah they're going everywhere but here even and they don't even care about cost of living anymore yeah. they just want to be able to like not be afraid yeah like I um I'm starting to go out every now and again a little bit more but for the longest time I was just like I got past that first phase of being 21 and legal being able to go out and right. legally drink <laughs> But recently, it's just been, even before the pandemic, I was just like, well, sure, it's nice to have fun and go out, but what's the risk? Yeah. Because I was actually just having this conversation uh, yesterday with a friend of mine. Um, Like, people just, whenever conflict happens, even if booze isn't involved, people just start shooting. Like, the days of street fight, not that I advocate for street fighting, but the days of street fighting. It's better than guns. Yeah. I mean. No, people, like everyone, I I just saw your uh, sticker. That's hilarious. E, that's hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, if you're listening, I have a water container here with tons of stickers. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, But no, the, the days of just street fighting is over. Everyone has a gun. Everyone mm-hmm. has a knife. And there was like a very horrific video that me and my friend were watching. And the guy just thinks he's big and tough. And the other dude's backing away. Clearly has training. Just. Yeah. Right, right in the neck and it just happens um it's very unfortunate um yeah. so when to kind of pivot away to, from murder <laughs> <laughs> yeah when you were uh, running for office what did you yeah. run for the podcast is brought to you by one of our brand new sponsors bucked up nutrition look it's no secret that i love going to the gym fitness and nutrition is a huge part of my life and bucked up is partnered up with the podcast Help support it. I cannot be more excited. This is one of my favorite P workouts. It's a high stimulant nootropic. I'm hitting PRs today, so I cannot wait to use this. The Banff Black by Bucked Up Nutrition. They've also got, as you can see, some awesome clothing here. Um, I With my t-shirts, I personally prefer the low... Uh, short logo here. Use our promo code at checkout, OKPOD20, to get 20% off of awesome clothes, supplements, all their products here to include their stacks. That's OKPOD20, another awesome stringer here for an additional discount at checkout. So I ran for Bernalillo County Commission. Um, it was something I actually was interested in running four years ago. Okay. Um, and frankly, because my current county commissioner, I feel like wasn't wasn't doing enough for like the west side. Um, I personally didn't feel heard. Um, there were lots of things that I was trying to bring up, never got a call back, um, and you know, just wasn't the right time. And then fast forward four years later, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll do it. And Frank, you know, honestly, I should have you know four years ago started planning, you know, for this election. But I didn't, you know, life happens and you forget. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then... We did go through a pandemic, so there's yeah, that too. Uh, this, yeah, this little thing that happened in 2020, <laughs> right? Uh, we're still kind of going through. Um, and, you know, it came up and I was watching to see who was going to run. And the one one Democrat that was running, um, I mean, she's ha- she was handpicked by somebody. And I was like, eh, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Right. I, I couldn't really get 100 behind her so um i was like well you know i'll put my hand hand in the ring and hand whatever (laughs) name in the ring gosh let me figure (laughs) out how to talk at the end of the day i just can't think um so yeah i mean i i tried i i went in you know again i this is not something i was like i'm gonna make a career out of my you know political role if i win this is just because i want to make a difference, as cheesy as that sounds. This is my community I love, and I want to see a difference in my community, um, specifically around drugs, homelessness, um, crime, like all these you know, little issues we have. Um, again, not saying I'm going to cure or fix any of that, but, you know, like I had some great ideas, and I think that um, there's still things that I can work on just as a constituent with others and, you know, whoever wins as my county commissioner now because I lost. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I, uh, I have high hopes. Um, I Yeah, so like I said, I did not win. Um, but I'm also, I'm a person that deals with failure a lot in my life. And I feel like I've only become stronger and a better person because of it. Um, and I, you know, I feel like I'm still recovering. It's been like a few weeks since the election, but that becomes your life. 
You know? Oh, I'm, I could not even imagine. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I first, I was like, yeah, it won't be that bad. And then it's like weekends, every weekend, going out, talking to people, going house to house, door knocking, um, going to events, like doing all the things. It's exhausting. And I'm an introvert. I, I love to go out and talk to people. But by the end of the day, I am tired. That's right. just how I am. Um, so that, yeah, it was a lot. So by the end of it, um, when I didn't win, like if it was a close race, I'd be more disappointed. But it wasn't. She beat me by a lot. <laughs> Um, and it was, you know, frankly, it was, it was really disappointing just to see how the election played. You know, this is a county race and to see how ugly it got against me was crazy. Like just tons of lies. Like, you know, I wasn't Democrat enough. Um, I, I donated to a friend years ago who's a Republican, a friend. Um, so I got painted as reporting Trump's Republican party. Um, like just silly stuff like that. And I'm just like, what? And then there were some lies, like blatant lies that I was just like, really? Like, this is what we're doing against your own party to win a seat. Um, and then I had people even tell me like, well, you need to do this and you need to do that and fire back and the, you know, mudslinging is how you win. I'm like, no, it's not like for me. I'm like, if that means I lose, I'm fine with that. Like, I am not going to be that person to bring down another woman. Um, you know, I don't know her. Like I've never, I never even met her. Um, but I, I have enough respect to not be that person. Like that's a, that's a no go for me. <laughs> so there's a lot that of what you just said that I want to really get into. So, which is great. Um, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, so what we found, what I found a, like really interesting about you when I first found you, I guess I found you through social media, yeah. which is a beautiful little. Well, it's a double-edged sword Scary today. and beautiful. <laughs> yeah. But um, the fact that you did decide to run for county commissioner, um, where a lot of people, they don't even know what that is. Yeah. Like, a lot of people just care about, like, maybe maybe they care about a senator or a congressman. But in reality, it's like, okay, who's the governor? Okay, they make laws. Who's the president? Okay, they really make bad decisions. Like, yeah. nobody nobody will ever fully love a president. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Um, so... You bring up a lot of really good points. Like, we do have horrible problems with homelessness and crime mm-hmm. and drugs. So what does a county commissioner do to help influence change in that? Yeah. So one of the biggest things they're responsible for is, like, mental health, um, mental health dollars, the um, detention center downtown. Um, so they have responsibilities over a lot of those funding funds. Um, so one thing that I actually did learn that is – great it's kind of a hidden treasure unfortunately uh but there's a um there's a mental health center um not downtown but more um southeast um where you can just walk in if you you know have a drug problem mental health problem um or if you just you know need to sober up um they offer like lots of help and assistance um even like a six-month program for a place to stay and live and go through a wow. program and where's which, that uh, I, I actually took a tour of it recently. Um, fabulous place. Like I didn't even know about it. Um, was I was, which I was like, we need this. And yeah. they're like, Oh, we actually do have it. That's good to know. <laughs> and, and you can come um, in not sober. Like you don't have to be sober for two nope, weeks or no, nope. you just, yeah. If you are, you know, high at the moment, you can't, which that was a, that was a major issue years back was, you know, at some places, it's like, you have to come in high, like, you can't be clean for two days or whatever. Like, stupid, I should have ever heard. You have you have to be high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been clean for too long, but if you shoot up, you can bring them in. Like, that's what they would say. Yeah, I dealt with um, someone who was going through that years ago, and it was the most crazy, asinine thing I've ever heard. That is perplexing, so, to say it nicely. Yeah, which I'm like, no wonder, like... We have issues, but, um, so, so now like, I will say like, yeah, that's great. We have that. I do think we need more of that because they can only hold so many people. Um, please continue. I'm just going to check the cameras. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we also need, um, we have a street teams that actually go to places like if, um, one thing that you, you brought up like defunding the police earlier. So, so part of that, it's not defunding, but, um, but like getting funds to actually like send these groups instead of police. So like if someone's having an episode, for example, and they're not um, harmful to anyone, 
this street team will come out and talk to them, do an intake with them, and take them at that moment to get help. So, so, so that's actually a very interesting point. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. I have never had someone explain to me how does that work. Yeah. Because at least in my mind's eye and the people that I've talked to about it, it's it sounds great. Yeah. Like that sounds like a great idea, but situations like that, especially especially if they're under the influence, yeah. um, can go zero to 100 really fast. Yep. And you want, that's when you want police there. You don't want right. to send like a social worker or whoever these like ground teams are. Right. So how, in theory, not as necessarily best case scenario, like in theory, how does something like that work? Yeah. So if it is, if somebody's calling and saying, hey, there's this person on the sidewalk, you know, they're having an episode or something. Can you, can you send them? They'll usually ask like, You know, do they have a weapon? Like, do they seem safe, like approachable, you know? And then if it's something to where they're like, okay, we can go talk to them. But yes, if they seem dangerous or if they do anything to seem dangerous, they will call the police. Yeah, it just, it just worries Um, me sometimes because of how violent Albuquerque in general can be. Yeah. And there are people, like I've had situations where people run after me and I, you don't know like what, you know, if they have something in their pocket or, you know, if they're really harmful or what you know um but i mean i think though there are situations where it can be helpful for sure the the problem though is you can't force anyone to get help right so you can do everything you want but if at the end of the day they're like no i'm good and and that's how a lot of people are i mean i actually took time to kind of talk to some people like you know early in on my election just to kind of get a sense of like what people are going through and I talked to quite a few people that are like, I just, I'm good. You know, I sober up once a month, I get my check and then I get back at it. Yeah. It's scary. And it's a cycle. So, and by get a check, I'm assuming you're talking about like the government assistance. Social security. Social security, right. So, and there's a lot of talk about, um, like government assistance reform where you have to be sober. You, if you need, if you need any kind of like food stamps yeah. or WIC or, um, Oh, what's the last one? I forget what it's called. Um, but if like you need food stamps or yeah, something, yeah, yeah, or? it's a lot of acronyms. Yeah, yeah. But if you need any of those government assistance, right, anything that's taxpayer funded, you need to submit to a drug test. Mm. Um, do you think that's feasible here? Do you I think mean, that's actually an, a possibility? Because honestly, feel like, no. Because like I was gonna say, I yeah. feel like that's, that's a great idea. Yeah, it's a, a, it sounds like a great idea in theory. But then when you get down to the nitty gritty of like controlling a person and saying, you only get this money if you do this. That is how your poverty rates skyrocket in this state. Unfortunately. No, no, no. I I mean, I've seen it. Yeah. I mean, I've actually talked to people who are friends who, you know, they're like, oh, I'm doing so good. But, you know, if I get paid more, like they've actually turned down um, raises because if they go over that threshold, they lose all their benefits. And then they aren't making enough. I mean, you know, even with the salary and with the raise, they still aren't able to afford putting food on the table and all these things. Right. Um, So it's really frustrating. I mean, I I think there needs to be a reform with that. So we really encourage people to grow, you know, with their career and whatever they want to do, but not, oh, well, you know, let's hold you back. Like, I I mean, I get it. Like if I was in that situation... No, I I, I would probably do the same thing. I completely agree. But yeah, it's just, it's really hard. That's a whole federal reform that needs to happen, but it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of years for that to happen. So is it really going to happen anytime soon? Probably not. Whenever we talk about anything that is more than four or eight years outside of an election cycle, like good luck. Yeah, no, especially today with everything being so tribal. And like, so you look at uh, when Trump came in, yeah. Uh, over the course of his presidency, he used a decent amount of executive orders. He, and like him or not, yep. he, there were some positive things that came out of that presidency, but no matter what positive or negative, anything that he brought into action or his administration got brought into action, the Biden administration came in and reversed a lot of it. And I'm scared that like a lot of the back and forth stuff is starting to become a... a, a That's uh, a norm. I yeah. mean, it's... Well, it's not starting to become a norm, but like it's just getting accelerated by identity politics. Um, yeah. But, and, and just to go back to the government assistance part, I agree. I've been in management um, for multiple caregiving companies over the last year and a half or so. Yeah. 
And one of the problems that I found is like, I mean, staffing everywhere is an issue, but we had a lot of caregivers that only wanted to do this amount of hours or they did, like you just said, they didn't want to accept a raise because their monthly income, even if it goes a dollar over that amount, they lose assistance. And that's why, like, I didn't agree with uh, everything he was running on, but what really interested me in Andrew Yang in this last mm-hmm. election cycle was the UBI. And because he was talking about, for people who don't know, what that, don't know what that is, is universal basic income. And basically what he was saying was there's going to come a time years down the road of mass unemployment and everyone's going to need money and we're going to phase out. And this is before the pandemic. Right. And it's like, well, the big thing is like truck drivers. They're going to get phased out because all these people they're trucking for – they're going to get their self-driving trucks, and that's just going to be the new norm. It's going to save billions of dollars for the industry. So what are we going to do with all these people? What are we going to do to make sure that they don't completely lose their livelihoods? And like, I think the retraining um, efficacy in this country is literally 0 to 8%, which is insane to me. If you have a 0% effective rate on something and yeah. keep it in place, that's yeah. insane. Yeah. But it was, we're going to do $1,000 a month. It's not enough to where you completely need government assistance. But if I got an extra thousand dollars a month, that's literally game changing. Oh yeah, for a lot of things. Um, obviously, I didn't really pan out, but it, I agree. I think with federal or with um, government assistance, I think maybe a state can be the person to like headline that. But hey, this mm-hmm. works for us. Unfortunately, it's not going to be New Mexico. And I forget who's telling me this, but the one benefit we have of being dead last in everything is we can just experiment. The government, the pol- the politicians here, if they want to, they can just experiment. It literally, it can get worse, but right. like, how much worse are we going to get with the podcast is brought to you today by OrganicPriceBooks.com. Uh, I love comic books. That is absolutely no secret to any of my friends, family, or listeners. And right here is just some of the comics that I have either bought or gotten sent to me by the fine folks over at Organic Price Books. As you can tell, they have a wide selection from DC, Independent, Marvel, and they have become the number one spot for everything omnibus, oversized hardcover, or just general collected editions. No matter what you want, they've got it. Go to their website and at checkout, use our promo code, just my name, Noah, N-O-A-H, to get additional discounts on top of what they already offer, which ranges anywhere from 30 to 50% off. Organicpricebooks.com, use my promo code, Noah, N-O-A-H, and start reading comics today. This. Yeah, um, I mean, that's that's an interesting one, because, I, I mean, I could go both ways with that, because, I, I mean, that's like in Santa Fe, for example, their wages are much more high. But also the cost, the cost of living is much more high. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's inflation, unfortunately, like across the country, we're seeing oh, yeah. that too. So, so I don't know how you would balance that. Um, it's good in theory, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. Lots of things would have to change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Um, and then, you, well, you also brought up that, uh, so as you got into the politics, like, I did see that you ran on the democratic side yeah. of things and but you were found to be not democratic enough. Yes. So yes. the way I digest statements like that, and really I just digest the Democratic Party and even like the Republicans, I think you have Democrats and you have li- and like liberals in this pool, and then you have hardcore leftists. Yeah. Just like in the Republican Party, you have conservatives, you have Republicans that are, you know, they're, they're normal. They have their beliefs, but they're normal. But then you've got like the, the, uh, the red hat wearing Trumpers, like, die hard like donald the man he the election was stolen you know all those sound bites yeah did you find that to be true on on the democrat side of things Well, that's that's exactly what it is um if you're not far left enough you know then uh, a lot of groups that i scored 100 percent on like still was not endorsed by them because i was not known as a true blue democrat Um, I mean, I I was actually an independent for a long time. I was a Republican until out of college, I turned into an independent because I was just like, you know what? I I just was a Republican because my parents were a Republican. Um, And that's just kind of what I did. Right. And then the more I learned, I was like, you know what? I'm more in the middle. I don't know which side I'm on. So I was an independent for a long time. And then as I got older, I was like, you know what? I probably am more of a Democrat. So then I just, you know, became a Democrat like five, six years ago. Um, 
So, so because of that, and I am, I'm more moderate middle of the road. Like I can work with both sides of the aisle. Um, I am more a Democrat. I mean, I am a registered Democrat. I side more with Democrats. Um, but, but you need to be able to talk to both parties. Yeah. I mean, in theory, that's (laughs) how it's supposed to be. Yeah. In theory. Um, but that's kind of, unfortunately the trend how it's been and it's both with both parties too it's like you know you get more support if you're this you know far right or far left right it's just how much like what identifiers do each party have and yeah. then how much of that can i just possess you know what <laughs> yeah. i mean like how much of that can i wear yeah. um and then i because i just ever since i became a voting age not too long ago i just it's been scary looking at politics I'm like I don't agree with any of these people. I yeah, just I just want to be left alone. Like yeah. and then now that we are in a post Roe v. Wade being overturned world, yeah. that is like cause I obviously I don't agree with the government telling people like on such a major issue you can't do this. And then people say, well, they're attacking women. It's like, yes, I agree with that, but on a broader scale, I think they're I think it's a habit of the government to attack a already marginalized group of people, yeah. not just women. Yeah, no. Like it happens to people that are lower lower class, black, yep. Asian. Like If you are a minority and they have an ability to kind of check that group, they're mm-hmm. going to. That's just, that's governments, whether right. it's the modern American government or it's the Roman government, or it's like, I'm sure it happens in small villages too. Like yeah. I just, that's human error. Um, but my point of bringing that up is it was just so strange to me that, I mean, I get why it happens, a more conservative Supreme Court, but why now? You know what I mean? Because I, I, the way I, they can. Do you really think it was just, just yeah. because they can? Yeah, I mean, I think someone said, hey, let's do this. And, I mean, there were two justices that said, you know, Roe versus Wade has been decided. I'm not touching it, but they sure did. <laughs> um, and, and it's, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think it was just, yeah, because they could. Because the they o- had the vote. Yeah, the only like hypothesis I can come up with is the Republicans thought it was a good idea because the election's here pretty soon. Yeah. We're going to make our big statement. We're going to take control again. But then I look at it on a more micro level here in New Mexico, where now in November, it's going to be Grisham versus Ronchetti. Yeah. And Ronchetti, one of his big things was anti-abortion yeah and now it seems like grisham just got the election handed to her Mm -hmm. would you agree with that yeah that's i I was just reading something about that earlier as a matter of fact um where that's going to be a huge winning point for her now i think you know even just a few weeks ago before this whole overturn um, you know, I think, I think they were a little worried, you know, they were worried, like, you know, he's got a good chance. You well, know, it's, this... it's tough not to, even if he's not the happy or lucky weatherman. I mean, it's, well, it's just, yeah. I mean, no matter what, like there are people that, you know, don't like her. I mean, I love her personally. Um, but there's a lot of people that were like, you know, I didn't like how she handled the pandemic. Right. You know, I just don't want a Democrat. We need change. So I'm just going to vote for the Southern guy. Right. Um, and now with this whole overturn, there's even Republicans that are like, no, like you can't do that. Right. I mean, I know somebody who's a pretty staunch Republican and even she was like, no, like, yeah. you know, the government telling us how we should control our bodies. It's not even about like abortion. Like it's just about that control. Exactly. Like really? Like you're telling me that I cannot control my body. Like I am not a human enough that I don't know how to, what to do with myself. Like, yeah. I just, I just don't get it. And it's frustrating. It's like, um, what was it? Um, they're like, oh, well, you know, I forgot what they were comparing it to, but, um, how, how they're like, well, you know, where you're going to do it anyway, or, you know, now they're going to do it anyway. Like the, um, I'm, I'm trying to use the example that Republicans said that, you know, you'll do it anyway, but now it's like Democrats are saying, well, you know, if, if I can't have a place to get an abortion, I'm going to, it's going to happen anyway, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, um, that's a whole, okay. If the Republicans are arguing that as a horrible, horrible argument. Because and it's, they, yeah. And I'm, and I'm forgetting what it was that they said. It was like some other big thing that happened. Because that's an argument that I've heard on the left yeah. where it's, you're not banning abortions. You're, or you're not protecting abortions. You're protecting safe abortions. Right. Right. 
And, and I, and I, I tend to agree with that. Yeah. And regardless of, cause I've heard a lot of, uh, like my Republican friends, my right leaning friends are like, well, the interpretation of the 14th amendment where it's right to privacy, it was an overreach to put that on abortion. Mm -hmm. And even if that were to be the case, even if I agree with that, let's for argument's sake, you're right. They did read that wrong. Yeah. This is technically the first time where a constitutionally protected right is taken away. Yeah. That sets a precedent, and I don't think enough people have heard that. Yeah. I don't think enough people have really had that told to them in a very, like, straightforward manner. Yeah. Because, sure, it's like, they're banning abortions. That's a great headline. That's a great clickbait. That's a great um, attention grabber. But yeah. if you really look into it, like, sure, they're giving it to the states, and then it gets a little more technical, but they have federally stopped protecting a constitutional right. Yeah. Which is strange to me because I know a lot of, not a lot, but like I know a couple of the justices, they were like, well, it's too, it's not big enough for the federal government. I was like, okay, let's, let's assume, for argument's sake again, let's assume you're correct. So in what universe, because I'm a, I'm a pro-gun, I'm a two-way guy. Yeah. In what universe is abortion smaller than concealed carry? That's actually because the example they, I was thinking. Because they so, ruled on yeah. concealed carry the week yeah. before, yeah. saying that you that the states cannot put a further restriction on concealed carry. Yeah. Now, how they handle places like California, New York, or Chicago, I don't know. I don't know how those fall through the cracks. I'm just not like legally savvy enough. Yeah. But I think those are equally important because it affects a lot of people. It's just different categories. You right. can't like as people are saying, oh well. Um, you know, women aren't as protected as guns. It's like, that's, you, they're in different camps. Like, you can't compare the two, but they should be both protected. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've said that too. I'm like, you know, I, a gun has more rights than me, but uh, whatever. Um, no, it was, it was, that was actually the example. Republicans were like, well, if you take guns away, they're going to get them anyway, right? So it's kind of the same thing. If you're going to take, you know, abortion away, like yeah. healthy abortion, they're going to do it anyway. And, oh, sure. and that being said, like, I'm not for taking away guns away. I am for taking AK-47s. I don't know why that's allowed, but that's for another day. Oh, why is that? <laughs> if, you, if you want to talk about that, um, do you? Yeah, I mean, I, I own two guns. Yeah. I'm all for protecting myself. Um, I, d I just don't understand why people need these large assault rifles like that can literally just kill tons of people in a minute. You sure. know, I mean, I just. I just don't understand. And it's these weapons that destroy your body. Like you can't go to a hospital and get fixed. Like your organs are destroyed. That's not, that's not necessarily true. It also, that, that also depends on I the, mean, that's on what the, the doctor said after the last um, shooting of these children. Like, well, it depends on, obviously it depends on like, what type of round you're using. It depends on what, you, what, uh, where you get shot, how you get shot, the scenarios in which that happens. Um, and but first of all, before you, er, yeah, before you can advocate in the part of guns, <laughs> To be fair, yeah. in my opinion, to be completely fair, if you are pro-gun and you're saying, I like owning an AR-15, I like owning my AKs, I like owning anything bigger than a pistol, yeah. you have to be honest. They're fucking fun. They are fun to use. They are fun to shoot. They are very fun to be proficient at. They are fun to... Because um, it's a skill. Yeah. It's, it's a very... Um, it's a perishable skill, too, so it's something you have to really work at and continue at. Um, and... The reason I say that is like why you shouldn't take them away from like a political standpoint is you look at somewhere like maybe Australia, where they had a they had one big mass shooting in the nineties, mm -hmm. and they were like, all right, fuck it, no guns, yeah, we're taking them away. Yeah, violent crime didn't go down a ton, but obviously their gun violence went down to zero. But now in the pandemic, where they turn into a police state, like mm -hmm. it, they're almost like I don't, I think it's a bit of a stretch to say, oh, turning back into the prison camp that they started as because a lot of people are saying that. But it does get scary when you see police grabbing people out of their homes and taking them away. Mm -hmm. It does get scary when you see like their version of the National Guard, their version of the reserves coming in. Yeah. And the citizens don't really have to protect themselves. Yeah. That does get scary. And when we see our neighbors up in Canada, um, I don't know if you saw this or not, but Justin Trudeau, uh, this genius, he <laughs> said in a press conference uh, that Canadians are no longer allowed to protect themselves. With their firearms. Oh. Yeah. So then, it's what scary. do you do? Right, exactly. I mean, it's scary. that being said, like, I, I, like I said, I have a gun, right? Yeah. Not everybody does, and they mm -hmm. think they're safe, and that's fine, you know, to each their own. Um, I, I don't, 
I don't agree with that statement. Yeah. Um, I think as, as an American, we have a right to protect ourselves. Yeah. But my argument is, is like when it comes to like rifles like that, assault rifles, mm -hmm. like that, is, that is, I just don't understand why why you have one like yeah it's fun yeah but have it in a controlled environment like oh that, for sure you know it's just it's just crazy to me like that one guy like it the, the park not parkland there's so many um the elementary the last big elementary uh, shooting i always mispronounce um, it uh, uvaldi uvaldi, uvaldi. uvaldi. Yeah. yeah like that guy he waited till he was of age to get his gun yeah and then he got it he even he asked someone to buy him they're like no i'm not buying for you yeah and then he got it and then he went and that, just shot these kids. That like, whole situation I, it's is awful. so I mean, horrible. yeah. I'm like, don't get me started. Yeah. Like, I just... <laughs> yeah. So did you find that the issue of the Second Amendment, um, because you're a gun owner, did that not make you Democrat enough? Was that one of those little mm, conditioners that you... Like, I, I don't... They never brought that up. Interesting. Like, I was never asked that question. Oh, okay. Um, I think it's more... I mean, frankly, I think it comes more to like environmental stuff is why it wasn't. Interesting. It's like the enough. thirty thirty uh, bill that came into play. They didn't bring. They didn't bring that up either. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. It was just very things that you know. I don't know. I I am when it comes to business, I am pro development, not like to the. the uh, the uh, place that we're gonna like run out of water, you know. I think we. <laughs> That's I think kind we of essential. To, yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> we need to make sure we're doing things that. Um, so we're conscious of water, preserving our water, the Rio Grande, all these things. Like I use the Rio Grande. I have a kayak. I like to use it. Um, God bless you. Trust in that water. God. Well, I don't. Bless. I'm not gonna swim in it or drink it. <laughs> Now, uh, for anyone that knows, like that is some of the grossest water ever and has it's sad. lots of things like, that you all should jokes not, aside, it's sad. It's really gross. Yeah. Yeah. There should be tons of fines. Um, and mon there should be more monitoring on that, but I agree. No, no, I agree. It's and frustrating. I, w <laughs> I, w I honestly wish, cause I, I have no free time. So as I just started college again, I have like no free time. But I would love to become like more environmentally conscious, learn yeah. more about what's going on because it's just I only see like the headlines. I don't know how much of them are true, how much of them are like the clickbait stuff. Like the ozone is depleting. It's like, well, we've heard about that for the last 15 years. Is it really important now or is it going to be a problem? Like how Al Gore was saying like the inconvenient truth yeah. and then people call them a hack 15 years later. But then now we see everything's on fire. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, becoming a big issue. Yeah. Polarized caps, melting, all these things yeah. that, yeah, everyone's like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. And it's like... Our, our state is burning. <laughs> yeah, it, it does get it does get scary. Um, and then I remember because I sat down with and this is one, this is actually the first time I ever heard about it. And I researched it the night before. I sat down with um, Jay Block. He was running mm -hmm. for governor, and he brought up the thirty thirty thing. Okay. And he had like, well, it's nothing but a government land grab to take land. I was like. Mm. Look, man, I don't like the. I, I just thought to myself, like, look, I don't like the government either, man. Uh, maybe they are taking land, but maybe like they're. Try, they're trying to do the right thing. Right. I think, like, I, cause I, I can't find myself siding with the Democrats a whole lot, but also can't find myself siding with the Republicans a whole lot. I yeah. just, I'm in that weird limbo in the middle. And I just think, I think a lot of Americans are like that right now. Yeah. Yeah. And when I read that 30 30, I'm like, well, at least they're doing something. Like, at least they're trying. Yeah. Because we do need development. This is like with the housing market the way it is right, right. now. We right. need development. But at what risk? Right. And whose land are we taking? What land are we taking? And then what are we displacing that fucks up the ecosystem? And that's for people way smarter yeah. than me. <laughs> yeah. No. And that and that's really frustrating. I mean, that's hard because yeah. yes, we're all you know we need to grow. Um, we need to have a good economy. But yes, what to what expense? Um, and that that was an issue that it didn't come up as much as I thought it would. But you know, there's this whole. Um, plan they're trying to develop on the west side and grow in this area um but it's like but where are you gonna get the water from like as it is right so so i've talked to a Ooh, lot that's of, a good point yeah i haven't thought about that there's so, piping that has to go down and I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah you know huh. um but it's it's interesting and it's kind of funny because um i mean i i even running for office, like I didn't dig into all of it. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot of things that they do plan to do, which like is great for water and all uh, water preservation. And Albuquerque is actually 
we are one of the leaders when it comes to preserving water and reusing water. Um, wow. It's just not talked a lot about. No, that's a positive you know? that needs to be put out there. Well, it should, should, but we're all like doom and gloom and we're running out of water and like we're not going to have water in five years. Like that's <laughs> that's what someone told me and I'm like... And then I talked to the literal expert in the city, you know, <laughs> that is his main job. And he's like, no, we're good for at least another hundred years. And, you know, hopefully, oh, wow. yeah. And, you know, of course we are working on plans to like make sure Drink we, this don't, with less guilt. Mm. <laughs> we don't run out of water by then. But, you know, cause you know, I, I mean, I don't have children, but like, you know, I would, you know, one day maybe. And, um, my nieces and nephews, like I want them to have water and be here, you know? <laughs> So I, I do think about those things. Um, but yeah, it's like all, how do you, how, how do you, uh, you know, uh, balance all of that? Yeah. It's, a lo- it's hard. Right. And I think that's what's, I'm not a huge fan of a big, big government, right. but I am a fan of a specialized government. Right. You can't just have the one dude with the giant staff that says this is what happens. No, yeah. you need someone that that's a commissioner. You need someone that looks at the environment, looks at the state's finances, the county's finance. You need all of that. Yeah. And to expect, I think we have a real problem here in this country where we expect, especially with the president, we expect the one guy or the one girl that's running or eventually gets it yeah. to fix to fix everything, all of the problems. And you can't executive order everything away. Yeah. You just can't. And it's funny. I think it was President Biden that actually said he felt like he got more done like in the his community, like as a community advocate. Like that's where the work gets done. And it's true when you think about it because it's so hard. Like, yeah, the president can do all these things. But that only goes so far. Like, is that going to affect crime in Albuquerque downtown? Probably not. Right. Well, I mean, then it maybe gets... if there's some huge thing that happened, but I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. Well, even if they did like a huge crime bill again that actually worked, and and it was like a nationwide thing, who? How are you that sure it's going to be enforced? Yeah. It's just tough. It's such a, like a huge, like saying it's a macro scale is an understatement. It's just a, it's it's an organization. It's a business. And to have such a huge thing like that, it's insane to me. Yeah. It's bananas to me that we only have one guy or one girl running the show. Yes, we have a vice president, but like, come on, (laughs) come on. It's, It's the one guy that we look to. And honestly, I know people talk a lot of shit. And I love talking shit, but Mm -hmm. but in all seriousness, I am I feel bad for Biden. I genuinely feel bad for the guy sometimes because he is showing like I'm not a doctor, but like I just look at that as a civilian, and I'm like, dude, if that was my grandfather, I'd ask him to stay home and watch his shows and eat his porridge. Something is going on with him. Like something's going on, and I think that. It's something that's like, when it's talked about, it's only in like a sarcastic, in a shit talking way. Oh, well, yeah. It's like, not- especially like if you vote, like I voted for him. So, of course, I'm like, you know, trying to be like, well, I mean, maybe he just had a bad day. And, <laughs> but now I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what's going on with him? You know, like well, something's going on. And then now his wife, she's, not saying the right words. Um, so I feel like, you well, know, the maybe whole breakfast said, taco statement didn't, taco. Really, didn't really oh set God. with you. <laughs> I actually thought that was a joke. I so think... I saw someone like create some meme or something yeah. like comparing Hispanics to talk or Latinx or which I'm like, I don't know if people like to be called that. There is anymore, no but, Hispanic um... or Mexican <sighs> or Latino or Latina person on this planet that wants to be called Latinx. No, there is no. no one. Which I hate it when they use it. But anyways, <laughs> um, when I saw that, when I saw that she had compared to tacos I was like, oh my God. I was like, that's a joke, right? I think I even asked the person, I was like, is this a joke? Like, she really didn't. They're like, no, she did. Well, because like, have you seen the full clip? I did. Yeah, because I digest that. And I'm like, oh, it's it's the nice old lady trying to make a soft comparison. And that's a stretch, too. I'm like, no, it's just, there's yeah. a little homegrown racism in there. Ooh. Yeah. But you no, know, but, yeah. but back to my point, it's like, I look at Biden and I'm like, <sighs> like someone or I think it's some ones in the Democratic Party at the highest levels were like, this is the dude that people know. They know the name. They loved Obama. They still love Michelle yeah. Obama. Yeah. And Biden was right along. He was the cool Uncle Joe that, that ate the ice cream and wore the sunglasses. Yeah, gonna, all the jokes. Yeah. Him, yeah. So we're just going to get him in there, and whatever policies we want, we're going to flood him through. We're just going to flood him through. And, and they're treating like the guy, he's a puppet. Mm. And it's sad. 
Like, yeah. I think it's sad personally. And then like, the poor dude dismounted off his bike wrong. Oh, I know. I saw that. Like, I couldn't help but laugh. And But like, come on. Like, yeah. it's an old man. A very, very poor old God. man. And then I look at the Democratic Party. I'd love to get your opinion on this too. Yeah. I look at the Democratic Party and I think it'd be very foolish of them to run Biden again because of the approval yeah. ratings and all that. And then same thing with Kamala. Nobody likes no, Kamala. Not on, a, not on a huge scale. Like, uh, unfortunately, our country is still so racist. She wouldn't win. A woman, a black woman, you know, as amazing as that would be, it's not going to happen. As you can see, like with our country, it's just, it's still too racist. I, I've had yeah. conversations with people, um, you know, in the South and I just like, I'm like, what did you say? Like, I'll be real. I, my, my mom's side of the family, they're from Alabama. And when I go and visit, I'm honestly shocked sometimes. Yeah. Like in the community. And it's normal. They're just at like, the community this is level, how they talk. It is so strange to me. So I'm like, what? I mean, I get it. This is where you grew up and yeah. that's how like your dad taught you. It's like your mom taught you, but like, bro, come yeah. on, we're in public. Like, yeah, I, I remember I had a cousin in North Carolina. Ugh, this is like when I when I learned about what racism was. Um, and I grew up in Louisiana. Oh, okay. Um, so like my best friend was black. Like I just never really thought, I didn't know what racism was. So I'm in North Carolina and um, we're walking on the sidewalk and um, this black family comes walking on the sidewalk and he's like, he walks off like he steps off the sidewalk and i was like what are you doing he's like and then he's like oh these ends are coming and i was just like what like and i was so young i was just like what right like i didn't even understand i just like was kind of looking around like dumbfounded and and i was like oh shit and you know yeah. had a later conversation with my mom about that whole thing um, and then he had s some other conversations, you know, that I was just like, we are the same age and you're right. talking like this, like right. what? I, it's crazy. So anyways, um, back to present. Yeah. I do not. I think the Democrat party knows that Biden cannot win a reelection. Yeah. There's even Democrats that are saying like, they don't approve of him. Like they need to find somebody strong yeah. enough to take his place. Well, it gets scary. And like with Biden and again, like going back to the mental state, what my fear was, was like, cause one thing that I really, really um, commended Trump for doing was he went and sat down with enemies. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that is a, a very strong, like, I don't think, I don't think by any stretch of the imagination that Trump should be a political leader, but he in his own right, but through his businesses, he had to take on leadership roles for an extended amount of time. And I think some of one of the ways that he clearly made deals was talking to people that were adversaries to him. So going out and speaking with people like Putin, going out and getting the North and South Koreans to shake hands, that is unheard of. And I was hoping that like maybe we could get that out of Biden. But then on second thought, I'm like, well, what if he lets the wrong thing slip? What if like whether it's something mildly offensive, yeah. something that's a matter of national security, like that's something you have to kind of think about. As the as this presidency runs on, and then like again for argument's sake, if he won a second term, because that's just more and more and more stress. Yeah, the stress levels of being the president, I would go bananas. Yeah, bananas. Um, and because I've heard like rumblings of like, oh maybe, um, they'll try to give Buttigieg a second chance or maybe they'll even bring in like Michelle Obama. I've heard Michelle. Yeah. I've heard that because she just pulls well with people yeah. because she was like, Ob uh, Barack was like the business. Barack was the, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be okay. Like, I was too young to really agree or disagree with him, but I yeah. always, he was a good speaker. Yeah. Oh, he was, was a fantastic yeah. speaker. And then Michelle was like, hey, I love kids. We're going to eat healthy. Uh, we're taking away the soda machine. Sorry, but uh, have, an, have an apple juice. Yeah. You know? So she's always been like that kind of familial energy. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that's a possibility that, that they bring her in? Well, okay. So contradicts what I just said um, <laughs> about Kamala. Um, she is a familiar face. People trust her. People love her because of Barack, of President Obama. Um, so, I mean, I, I think that actually is very likely. Well, see, and I think she could win. Well, I don't think that contradicts Kamala because, yes, I do. Like, obviously, there's a race problem in this country. Like, you yeah. can't deny that. Um, and if you do, you're probably racist. But um, I think part of the reason why 
Kamala isn't going to be polling well aside from race, um, whatever percentage that makes up, it's just because I don't think she's personable. I don't mm. think that she portrays a image that you would like everyone wants that president you want to go and have a beer with. Right. And Kamala Harris, they had her kind of shadowed away for the first hundred days. They brought her out and that border incident happened. Yeah. They hit her away again. And now they're starting to slowly trickle her back out uh, during this whole Russia Ukraine incident, or I guess war that's going on yeah. because of the lack of a, like just cognizance out of Biden. I think she's coming out right now as a necessity. Yeah. Because she just, I don't think, I don't think Kamala Harris does well under, I don't think she knows there's pressure, like unknown pressure. I think there's these little sound bites she doesn't think are going to go viral. Mm. And they, like the whole board, like, oh, we've been, we've been to the border. <laughs> and she has that weird laugh. Yeah. And then that went viral. Because people don't like that. Yeah. And as petty as that is, that's just something that kind of, in the age of social media and oh, clickbait gosh. and, yeah. you know, these little uh, 15 to 20 second viral images or viral whatever. She does not fit in with this um, medium. Yeah, and they, that might be what they're doing right now is to kind of see, like, you know, how people perceive her, you know, as she's kind of trying to you know, maybe coming out a little bit more right now. Yeah. To see, is this somebody we want to run? Because I I just don't see, I just do not see President Biden winning again. Yeah. But also, I don't know who's, is, I don't know if Trump going to try to run or what's going to happen. I fucking hope like, not. Like, I don't know what's going to happen, you know, who's going to run against Whoever that is. Yeah. So. I just, well, because it I, all depends. I look at the possibles, and the only two that come to mind are Abbott and DeSantis. And I was kind of about DeSantis, but then, like, the anti um, uh, transgender stuff started coming out of Florida. That's what started making me kind of rethink that. I was like, hmm. Look, man, I'm not I'm not all for giving little kids um, hormones or uh, any kind of like, um, like like hormone blockers or testosterone or anything like that. Because I myself I'm on testosterone through a doctor, yeah. and I know what that's doing to me. Yeah, I'd be terrified to find out what happens to a little kid. Yeah. But like banning, like talking about, uh, I think it was either Florida or Texas. They kind of blend together at this point. But it's like you can't yeah, learn. Florida really yeah, you that, can't yeah. you can't learn about gay people in some schools during. Don't the, say gay. Yeah, yeah it just it's no. it's weird to me. Which is crazy. So if I'm young and that's something that I want to talk to my counselor about, they have to say no. I can't talk to you about it. Right. Uh, which I'm just like what? Which I feel like as a kid, like that a like that's scary. You know, I, I don't care. You know. People can have their opinions or whatever. Like, I personally feel like, you know, you're born that way. So if you're going through this, like, as it is, growing up is tough. So if you're having <laughs> feelings and you want to talk to somebody and then you can't talk to somebody. Yeah. Like, holy shit. Well, like, that that's point... going to create more mental health problems. And they yeah. don't even know the can of worms like they opened up there. Yes. Uh, it's just, I don't, I don't understand why people like are so resistant to those things. Like I, I get it. You know, like you don't want, you know, your kid like that or whatever. It's different. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> like get over it. Yeah. I, I, I had this. So I was volunteering at this camp this weekend. Was and it camp this, enchantment? Yeah. And this, this yeah. one, like I thought we were going to be doing a bunch of girls hair and makeup. Right. <laughs> so one you know, one boy comes over and he's like, I want to look pretty. And I was like, okay, like, what do you want? He's like, full makeup. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Like, he's like, this is the one time I do this every year. And I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. You know, whatever makes you happy, right? And this one boy, he wanted his nails painted. And he's like, well, but do you have nail polish remover? I was like, yeah, yeah, we, we you know, we'll, we'll find some for you. He's like, well, I need it because, like, I can't go back home with my nails polished because my dad's, like, boys are not supposed to wear nail polish. Like, he does not – he does not wearing it because he's like trying to, you know, cross dress or whatever. He's just wearing it because like everybody's doing it for fun. Yeah. And I was like, this poor kid. Like, <laughs> I'm like, he can't just be a kid. Like, well, well, and I think that an environment like that is bred out of we can't talk about it, we yes. can't acknowledge it because I, again, like I don't think we should be walking kids through the step by step of what a trans, uh, what a transition surgery is. I think that's a bit much. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think, um, opening that is strange, but, and again, I'm not a parent. I hope to not be a parent ever because having kids scared the fuck out of me. But, um, 
if I had a kid and they came to me like at a very young age and like I'm attracted to someone of the same sex, that's a that's a conversation. That's right. not a shove it down and let it, let, it, let it literally become a mental illness later. Yeah. Like that that is something you have to talk about. Um, I can see the argument of maybe like, should that be discussed in school? I'm not sure. Cause I don't think that teachers should be, should be like t- talking to kids about their personal lives, yeah. but, but our to, poor but, teachers, like they take right. on so many roles. They, they take on a ton of roles anyway, but to completely, I think with any issue to completely yeah. shut it off yeah. is an issue Yeah, because no, star- starting with no is never a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's just sad. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure there's many teachers, though, that they're going to probably risk their jobs because they're like, I'm not going to let this poor kid suffer and have no one to talk to, you well, know? It, I think that was Florida, where it was if a kid comes home and basically says, hey, teacher taught me about gay people today, the parent could turn around, report the teacher, teacher gets yeah. ejected. And that's yeah. just weird to me. Yeah. That is a bit much. Yeah. A little more than a bit much, but, you know, it's it, that's weird. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I do one more thing. I do have a, curi- a curiosity about when you're running for an office. Yeah. Was there ever a conversation where like they sat you down and they're like, "All right, listen, you're getting into politics. This is gonna get dirty. They're gonna dig up your shit." Yes. Is like, 100%. Is, is there anything we need to know about? Oh, 100%. Dude, where'd you bury the body? <laughs> right. Where did this weird money yeah. wire go to? <laughs> like, oh, I definitely had that. They're like, "All right, no one's around, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." They're like. <laughs> They're like, all right, so you need to tell us all your dirt right oh, now. Oh, jeez. So it was like stupid shit. Like, I don't have dirt. I'm like, uh, I got a ticket. Uh, like, I got a, gosh, minor in possession when I was in college. Like, uh, they're like, no, no. I'm like, I've never, you know, been arrested, right. any of that. So, yeah, it was kind of funny. I'm like, the stuff they lied about was so stupid. I'm just like... Did they, like, did they, uh, like, your team, did they comb yeah. through your social media? Did they, like, yeah. ask to oh, see yeah. this, that, and the other? I had to hide stuff, like... How deep I'm, did it go? I am... I So, so I... I do a lot like fitness, like, personal motivation, like, all these things. Which is dope, and, by the way. And I... So, go to the gym. Just go to the gym. It's good for you. <laughs> well, I, I went through this whole, like, I gained a lot of weight. I was in an unhappy place. And then, you know, I got, you know, I just figured out, you know, how to lose weight on my own, like nutrition, eating, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um. So I documented that and then talked about it after. And then that's just my lifestyle now, you know, and I kind of, during the campaign, I gained weight back. Now I'm trying to get, you know, back to my happy place. And anyways, they're like, don't post your workout videos. Don't do that. Like, be careful about what you say. Don't do this. Don't do the selfies. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, what? So, like, I felt like I was a whole different person, which is unfortunate because, you know, as a woman, you know, running for poli- running an office, I was like, you know, like empowerment and like helping others. Blah, blah, blah. They're like, yeah, but, you know, cut back on this. I'm like, did they ask? And you it's to- unfortunate because I get it. Because lots of the voters, in this last election were older people. So if they see me in a bikini, you know, they could have taken that and run a whole mailer and be like, is this someone you want representing you? Like, you know, what did they say? Instagram, babe? I'm like, yeah, they could do that. And is that's that so an shitty. insult? I my, mean, my if, brain if does I'm, not register that as if an I'm insult. 73 and I don't know Instagram and I oh, see a fair. picture of I someone in saying. a bikini. I'm like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. See, because my thought of a of a leader in general is physical fitness. I'm a huge believer in physical fitness. And I think that's something that's kind of starting to permeate, whether it's because of necessity out of the pandemic, or maybe it's because of the backlash to the extreme like body positivity movement. Either way, yeah. the the idea of fitness motivation and self improvement is starting to make a turn. Like it's coming back around. Yeah. Because I think like as you know, because uh, you are physically fit, if you can put yourself through a physically strenuous ordeal, that takes a lot of mental energy. Yeah. So if you like me personally, if I don't work out in the mornings, the rest of my day I feel like shit. Yeah. And then at the end of the day I work out, I'm like, okay, I am now ready to start my day at eight o'clock at night. Because oh. I have gone to the gym. <laughs> I'm opposite. I can't work out in the morning. <laughs> um <clears throat> so so why aside from maybe like the older generations, was was there anything that's like, oh, if they see a very 
physically fit person, you're going to alienate maybe a certain group of people who aren't fit? Was that ever a conversation? No. Um, it was brought up that after the campaign um, that maybe uh, my picture was too pretty. Like, you know, maybe I should have been more... <laughs> What did I say? It was too much of a glamour shot, like that we used, because we had like billboards everywhere, like, yeah. um, and they're like, well, maybe we should have done something more serious. I'm like, whatever, you know. Interesting. That Interesting. was like the worst of it, yeah. Okay, and then so when it comes time, like, and you're in the um the thick of it, right? Yeah. You're in the po- you're in the race. See, personally, I don't have cable television. I've completely converted over to streaming services and all that kind of stuff working for comcast that is not what i want to hear but okay (laughs) and like so i don't get very many political ads i just that's a blessing right and i'm actually surprised because they've infiltrated youtube locally as well so (laughs) and like well it's interesting the reason i bring that up though is because i went to get my um i went to get my windshield changed out in like Mayish, mm-hmm. and when I was sitting in the lobby, they had a little TV up, and they had cable, yeah. and it was, and granted, all I saw were like the governor ones, oh, and yeah, yeah. I lo- and this is probably the first time that I've seen attack ads <laughs> since like the 2016 election, and so I'm like, oh my god, they still do these, yeah. Oh, it's like the they, they started early. It's like dun dun, and it turns black and white. It's like. Mark Ronchetti for go- fucked up the weather <laughs> three years ago and ruined your crops. Do you want that for governor? Dun, dun, dun. And it's like, oh my God. So I never saw. There's I haven't br- seen that one. Uh. <laughs> Maybe I'm paraphrasing. But the uh, the reason I bring that up uh. is I never saw any attack ads just in general, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what, if you're comfortable bringing them yeah. up, like what were some of the shit that they th- like threw at you? They're at me. Um, yeah. So the one was, um, I mean, they even, so there was this one group that endorsed me that I like, I actually would have been. I wish I could have like been like, no, take me off. Like, you know, remove your endorsement. Um, Are you but, comfortable saying who that was? Uh, I think it's called Working New Mexico or something. Oh, I've never heard of them. Okay. Um, but like, I didn't even know they endorsed me. Like I saw it in a blog, but like this one group asked me, will you uh, recuse yourself from that endorsement? I'm like, yeah, like I don't care. Like they're not doing anything for me. Like I haven't seen them do a thing, whatever. Um, but they actually hurt me more because – of, because of their association, like they received gas, oil and gas money. So, and one thing that was going out was like, oh, oil and gas backed. Um, you know, what was the other thing? Um, oh, it was like a bunch of bullshit, like frankly, like stuff from this group that is supporting me that I have no relation with, which legally, like you can't have any relation with anyway. But like, I was just like, like what? Like, I have no relation to them. Like, so Anyways. you 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 removed yourself from the oil and gas company. So I I I have n- I never got any um, money is from them. Right. But because this other group that endorsed me got oil and gas money. Okay. I you got were pegged tagged. as like an anti environmentalist. Environmentalist. Yeah, like stupid and... stuff like that. I can't even remember like the other things they said. But I I remember I did fire back and I commented on their post because like lunch, lots of people liked it because it had me compared to my opponent and it was stuff with her that i was like she's not involved in that (laughs) but okay (laughs) i've never seen her in the community which i mean again i don't know her i'm just saying you know well from your own personal experience experience i was just like whatever so yeah in the comments i was like well just to set the record straight i never received oil and gas money um, I also have been a Democrat, you know, for years. So please do not say like, you know, I think they said I was, I chose to be a Democrat to run for office, this office or something. And I was like, <laughs> well, wouldn't I like just, oh, that was the other thing. She just ran, um, she just turned into a Democrat two years ago. I'm like, no, that's not right either. Um, anyways, like very thing. Oh, and then the other thing was my campaign manager gave me money, which is not true. My campaign manager volunteered. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were on a bare bones budget. (laughs) Like I donated money to my campaign because I needed (laughs) money. Uh, it was very sad. Um, anyway, yeah, I can't say like there wasn't anything out there. Like when I saw stuff, I was like, boohoo. But you know, it was nothing like that. I was just like, Oh my God, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> it was no, no, nothing too traumatic or whatever. Yeah. 
Well, because yeah. I, I look at politics, obviously, as an outsider, and I'm, I'm very interested in it, and I read as much as, about as much as I can without either going insane or falling asleep. But I look at it, and sometimes I'm like, maybe I will run for politics. Yeah. If I'm in New Mexico in the next four years, maybe I will. But then I see all the insanity that flies around it. And yeah. then I hear stories like yours where I'm like, mm, maybe I'll stay out of the circus. Yeah. And so I don't become a clown. Like that... That just, it's scary. And then well, that's the other thing is I have worked on the other side behind the scenes as a lobbyist and I've seen that world as well. And the world of influence by money. Um, and I see how that is as well. So yeah, if you're not doing the right thing, they'll throw money against your campaign the next go round to vote you out. Um, or how much money in politics really affects these people. So all of it. So yeah. that's sometimes it's like, is it really going to benefit me or not? Like I said, I'm not, I, w- I was not running in like for aspirations for a political career or anything. It was more just a, you know, we'll do it and see what happens. And if I can help make a difference in my community, cool. If not, I'll find other ways to do it. So. Well, and that's what politics is supposed to be about. Yeah. It's That's why there are no socioeconomic, educational um gender or race requirements yeah to be even in the constitution like the the piece of document that was written by slave owners they didn't put any of those restrictions yeah because they were like we just got done fucking with the king and the queen and we need to have organic leaders come out of the community yeah and but now we go so far forward here we are. Well, that being said, so like New Mexico, yeah. we have uh, for our state uh, representatives and senators, um, they they don't get paid. They get a per diem and they get like, you know, paid to go to junkets and conferences oh, yeah. and all that stuff. But they don't have a salary. So by default, the only people that can run are people that can take time off work during the session, um, can afford, you know, taking that time off wait, wait, wait. So, i'm sorry run it by me again so if yeah. you're a representative or what else senator a state senator. reps and senators you know the roundhouse yeah if you're in the roundhouse in santa fe you do not get paid Mm-mm. you get a per diem interesting yeah that i did not know that yeah what's the if if you know about it like what's the logic behind that is it it's be, just never just all volunteer work it's kind volunteer of just, work yeah. so staff gets paid Um, They don't have a year-long staff, though, either. So um, we have one of the most accessible legislatures, like, in the country because of that. So, you know, they most of them have their cell phones online. You can call your legislator. Um, But, you know, they have to do all their own work during the year. There's some staff up in Santa Fe, uh, you know, outside of the session. But during the session, they get a secretary, um, and that's it. And they don't get paid. They get paid if they travel. That's about it. Interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, because and then I, cause I was, when I was looking to your campaign, the person you were running against, mm-hmm. one of the biggest red flags that I saw from your opponent, admittedly, was it said this individual uh, has ran politics. This like has been in po- the political sphere this long, and they're like I think it's like their father was in it too. And it's like oh okay, this is like every other New Mexican politician where it's all legacy shit. Like it's all legacy. Because I'm all for... It's all about who you know half yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly. It, it, the politics gets political, obviously, Noah. Yeah. But, like, yeah. it just... It creates cancers. And then, like, we look at... I just... Again, I'm not as educated as I should be about politics. But I know how to count. And we are 51st. We are yeah. dead... Now that they count DC. Right. We're 51st. We're dead last in everything. Yeah. And it just... It worries me that we're tr- that people want to stay in the same track. And it's not even people that make money off of it. Like, if you're corrupt, of course you want to stay in the same track because you're making yeah, your money. Yeah, But if you're just, you're the average individual, you're like, hey, everything's fine. It's like, dude. <laughs> well, that's why, like, I'm always encouraging people. Like, it didn't work out for me, but, you know, maybe down the road I'll do it again uh, for a different office. Um, but I'm always encouraging people, like, if you want to make a difference, why not? Why not? Because we need more of these people that are not connected to run and to create some diversity, you know, because yeah. it's always the same people or, you know. No, I agree. Um, one thing I do want to close on. Um, so you think that maybe you might want to run again, doing something different in the future? Because community work is something that's big to you. Yes. 
Um, I love volunteering the community. Um, I think that would only help me like with my community work. Um, but you know, like I've said, like I, I don't, I'm not going to sacrifice who I am either. So if that means I have to like bash someone to win an office, I'm not going to do it. Um, if it means I have to change my whole life, you know, I'm not going to like, I, I've, I've know I've realized like I, I want to stay true to myself and something I love to do is like, you know, just as silly as it is, like promoting being healthy and being happy and, um, giving back in your community and supporting local and all these things because I love my community. Um, so if the right thing comes along, sure. Like I would definitely be interested, um, but you know, we'll see, we'll see what the future holds. No, that's awesome. Um, and before we get out of here, what are you, uh, what kind of like volunteer stuff do you think people should know about right now? Um, to go out and seek out, maybe even be a part of. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's so much. Um, well, like we mentioned earlier, Camp Enchantment, that's a great one. We send kiddos who, um, either have cancer or in remission to, to camp once a year. Um, so they go to camp for a week and they just get to, get away, you know, from whatever they're going through in life. Like, I mean, the stories I heard from some parents, like, you know, my kid is starting a really rigorous treatment on Monday and she just got to be a kid this week. Like, thank you. Like, that's just one example. That's like awesome. all the stories. Um, there's so many great other great organizations in the community. Like it would be the whole podcast to talk <laughs> about it. Um, but you know, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I talk a lot about it a lot. Um, I'm always promoting like local events, like, Hey, come to this event to support blah, blah, blah. Um, just, you know, one of the things I just always say is if you can just make some time to volunteer in the community, find something you're passionate about and just make time to do it. So. And where can people find you on social media? Um, on social media, it's at Aaron Muffaletto. M U F F O L E T T O. Um, that's like all my handles are the same. Aaron Muffaletto, Twitter. Sometimes I go on rants there. So that's amazing. <laughs> well, I usually start the podcast by saying this, but I um, I really do appreciate your time. Yeah, um, thank you. This was no, a lot this of fun. Is, this has been fun. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, of course. And I'd love to do it again sometime. Definitely. Uh, you're great. We, we don't have to like go down the rabbit hole of politics. Yes. That's, that's a, <laughs> that can be like one that's like, oh my gosh, politics. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, thank you very much again. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys for listening and watching. And we'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>